Hello Matrix Live, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you are listening to this podcast, my guest today is Daniel Fedorin, Daniel got a uh, Bachelor of Science of the Oregon State University, he is studying for a master's degree uh, with a major in computer science, he has worked on so many cool projects including a compiler for a functional language, an Elm based frontend for Matrix, He's spent the last time of hacking as an intern at Element, hacking on Hydrogen to move it to TypeScript um, to help testing it and, and find odd bugs and to write documentations for it. He co-authored three papers. He's been a teaching assistant is, and is now a research assistant. Daniel, I refuse to believe you are a single person when you achieve so much. Where is your twin? It's uh, hiding off screen. <laughs> Today you're here to talk about uh, Matrix Highlights. Uh, what is Matrix Highlight? Uh, it's basically a little tool that I made for myself that um, lets you take a web page and then add highlights to it and comment on sections of that web page. And all of that is built through Matrix. So basically each highlight is actually a message in, um, in Matrix. And that means that uh, you, can, you already have all this uh, infrastructure that Matrix provides. So you can collaborate with other people and everyone receives these messages and you can self-host your own server by just hosting Synapse um, or maybe Dendrite. I haven't tried that. Uh, yeah, so uh, it's a neat little tool I hope to improve on in the future. All right, so a tool to take annotations on web pages uh, based mm -hmm. on Matrix so you can run on your regular Synapse, Dendrite, maybe Conduit, um, standard Matrix. How is it different from Populous Viewer we saw in, uh, in last week's interview? Uh, Populous is very cool. And actually, uh, the person shared it at the same time that I shared Matrix Highlight. Uh, and Populous does PDFs. So you upload a file, and then you annotate the file. And I think the plans are to eventually annotate um, like audio, video recordings, maybe pages as well. Uh, so my hope was to eventually add PDF support to my tool as well. But I guess I started at the web page end, and the person started at uh, the PDF end. And I, I think we're kind of both working to, towards the same goal. Right, very cool. Can we have a look at, uh, at the product itself? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So what it basically does is it adds this little tooltip to highlight with matrix to your usual Chrome menu. Uh, and actually, one of these has a slightly outdated version, but they will both work together just fine. So the first thing you do is you um, so each web, web page corresponds to a room in matrix so what you need to do is actually create that room uh, in this case i'll just call it you know highlight room whatever that's the default name um, and now i can basically add highlights so i can select some text i get this little pop-up with some colors i can select the color oh um, i guess these are both logged into the same account uh, oh well. So then, <laughs> uh, uh, typically I log them into different accounts. Oh yeah, they're both vanilla ice cream thing. Uh, I log them into different accounts, but then you can just invite the other account um, by their matrix ID, just like you would in a regular chat. So everything is backed by matrix here. Um, right, so then um, I can also comment. Oh, this is actually very old. Um, I can also leave comments on these messages, uh, on these highlights. So I would say, oh, this is a long time ago. And oh, let's see if this will work. Ah, yeah, this, is, this one is really old. Um, so it doesn't actually have comment support. But uh, this one on the right does. And they, they will both um, appear on both screens, everything like that. You can change colors. That one doesn't support that either. Oh, my god. Uh, yeah, this is an older version of the prototype, but uh, should I refresh maybe? No. All right, but uh, how could I do this? I could probably just open two windows of this, and that way I have two versions of the prototype running at the same time that are actually up to, up to date. Ah, there we go, look at that. So uh, the newer version supports changing colors live or live-ish. Sometimes it takes uh, a little bit to deliver a message over Matrix. Um, and yeah, comments will also appear, like I can say, again, uh, and have it show up there. Uh, 
and yeah, so what I usually do is I actually used uh, this tool to edit this post that I have here. My friend left me some feedback on what I wrote. I wonder, I wonder if it's still here. Ah, yeah. So I'm not going to go into the comments, but uh, someone proofread this article or proofread this article and actually left comments for me to, for things I need to fix. So I've already been using it for my personal um, life. Uh, that's about all, that's about it. I mean, you can also list all the quotes, all the highlights in this little menu, um, and you can view all the users. Uh, there's no settings right now. This is not even a button. You can't click it. Uh, yeah, that's all I got. Very cool. Uh, so that's a that's a pretty advanced project already. Are you working on it alone? Yeah, it's just me. Um, it's a hobby project, so I, I just work on it in my free time. Uh, I wanted to, I want it for myself, and I want it to be a tool that I can use. And I already, as I showed in the demonstration, I already use it for myself, and that's really what I'm, what I'm going at first and foremost. All right. So you don't have any plan to monetize it, or you don't want to be, uh, especially for, you don't want to be sponsored by by, by a company to develop sp specific features. At most, I would like to provide like paid hosting that would work with this. At most, that's if I ever make it, and that's only if it's production. You know, if it's really good and I feel comfortable uh, doing anything of that sort. But I will. I wanted to have the same model that kind of um, Matrix and Element have. Is that it, it's always free, and if you want to kind of offload that work of managing it, then you can pay someone. But uh, other than that, everyone is free to self-host and federate and do all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And and how much work did it represent to get a uh, matrix highlights to the shape it is today? Um, I think I started like very early in the fall, and here we are now. At times, I was working on it like all day, every day, just because it's fun. Uh, nowadays, with school and, and and everything like that, I work on it a lot less. Uh, maybe even not at all in the last couple of weeks. Um, yeah, I I started out because you know I, I I took my uh, I was an intern at, on Hydrogen and Bruno and Hydrogen has this whole homemade UI framework for Hydrogen that's really low impact because it's all like dynamically updated and it's uh, it doesn't have any of these um, virtual DOM stuff that React has so it's this very uh, um, lightweight I mean Hydrogen is meant to be really lightweight and so that framework was very lightweight and I wanted to do something like that. And so I started out um, uh, using making a very similar type of thing, and then I realized that I'm spending like hours and days um, creating this lightweight framework, and then I'm probably I'm wasting so much of my time, uh, and that even though it's less you know heavy, it's it's just not viable for me as a single person doing it in my spare time. So I rewrote it, and I just started using React, and that took a little bit of time. Uh, so I already have had a rewrite, um, which doesn't usually happen this early. But uh, so yeah, it's quite a bit of work at this point. Um, but it's really fun, as I said. Like it, typically, I just I will just sit and I will add a feature, and that's just exciting. That's like the web dev experience, you know. You can always just see things appear on screen, and that's just yeah. All right. Um, so interestingly, you mentioned. Um, Hydrogen and, and having worked out elements, it, it means you're probably pretty seasoned about the Matrix uh, protocol. Um, last week, Graham, the developer of Poplis, you mentioned being working on a MSC MSC three five seven four marking up resources. Mm. Are you using the same MSC uh, to model web page and annotations? Um, or so, if yes, can you cover briefly how it works? If not, why not? And do you plan to upstream your work in the uh, in the matrix specification? Uh, I am not using the same MSC. Um, that MSC is based very closely on how um, Populous Viewer does things, um, and we have a fundamental difference in what we do. So. Um, Populous creates a room for every highlight. So every time you create a highlight, that's a much one matrix room. And then messages to that highlight are just, or comments on that highlight are just messages in the room. Um, whereas I have a single room for the page 
each highlight is a message, and then comments are thread replies. So I'm using the threading uh, MSC. Uh, and I think that the room approach is actually more versatile because you can add, but you can use spaces to organize things. Um, and a highlight could actually be part of multiple, because a room can be part of multiple spaces. So you could hypothetically um, share highlights between rooms or something like that. Uh, and that's what that, that MSC, I think, kind of anticipates as well. But I started out before that that was a thing. And I went, I wanted something more lightweight. So personally, my experience is that creating and joining rooms is kind of slow. I didn't want to have to wait. And maybe that's just, I mean, I run my own home server. It's tiny, right? So it, it takes me literally 20 minutes to join big rooms on matrix.org. Um, like, I don't know, if I want to join like Synapse Dev or something, it would just, it just take 20 minutes or something. So uh, I don't want to have to wait a long time to create or join a room, you know, send all the events that are like change room name, change, like invite people, send, you know, all that kind of stuff. That's why I went for the event uh, or some messages for, for highlights and then messages for comments instead of rooms for highlights. I don't know. So I think that my my approach is very specific and um, maybe not worth turning into an MSC. I mean, it's a use of matrix that I'm very happy with. Uh, but it doesn't seem like you know it'll be implemented by other other clients. So putting it in a spec is kind of um, maybe uh, yeah. I, I don't think it's worth putting in the spec. Right. I think the beauty of Matrix is that you can add all these different types of events, um, all these different you know mess like fields to your events, all that um, without having to have a spec for it. Really, you, you can these events are like free for your uh, you know wildest imagination dreams. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, so I, I wouldn't say that everything that you do with matrix needs to be formalized or put in a spec. Right. I, I kind of like the, uh, the approach of using the room, uh, to, to store many things. Um, because one of my questions is, uh, can matrix highlight be embedded as maximized widgets? Because as you know, uh, maximized widgets is something we're after. Uh, it's mm -hmm. true that uh, room joints can be sometimes pretty long, and there is a lot of work on going to to make this faster. Um, but it's a it's a valid criticism. Um, I really like uh, th that approach because, in my sense, if you could have a, a widget of um, of matrix highlights and, and a room to chat, you could have a, the same room for the conversation and just for the data, uh, which uh, which I find pretty interesting. Um, do you have, have you tried uh, to, to use it as a widget so far? I have not. Um, but I will say that this whole thing about chatting in a room um, while having the page highlighted is something that I, I'm hoping to do. So there's the MSC for extensible events mm -hmm. um, in which eventually, as far as I understand it, Element will also fall, fall back to specific keys in your events, like m.text or something, um, even in like events that aren't message events. So the example uh, in the MSC is like an Internet of Things event with like a temperature or something. And then it also has a fallback text for Element to display it. So with that, I could have highlight events, you know, in a room that also show up in chat. And then you can reply to those events in Element, like a regular thread, and those replies will show up on the page just the same. And, and so really that's that's kind of, that would be very nice because then you could chat about the page, chat about the specific parts that get highlighted, and um, not necessarily even leave your your chat client to do it. Well, maybe you will have to leave your chat client to start highlighting something, but not to comment or, or reply to uh, highlights. If you have um, it as, as a maximized widget, you don't even need to to leave your chat client because you could have really uh, made it have light, highlight as the main widget and and the conversation as a as a side widget. Um, yeah, I was, yeah, I don't know how that would work because I would need to display a page as well. Like I would need to fetch some other arbitrary page, uh, from somewhere like in an iframe or something, mm -hmm. uh, which might be weird. So I don't know. I've never tried making it a full, a, a full screen widget. So I'm not really talking, uh, with a lot of backing, you know, but yeah, it's not. I want to make it work well by itself first before kind of branching out and making it this. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, trying, trying to make it a widget or trying to switch my model 
to like the room or to the uh, room per height like model like like populace has it. So for now, I'm just going to kind of get the fundamentals um, and then move on. And one of the other questions I had is, um, do you save a copy of the web page uh, in the matrix room or is it just a link to the web page uh, and you add then an event per annotation and comment, etc.? Right now, it's just a link. Um, but I suspect that we will eventually need to save the whole page somewhere. So um, the the populist person, I, I, don't, I don't know, did you say Graham was their name? Mm-hmm. Uh, so Graham uh, was talking, we, we, we talk about these things, and he mentioned uh, WARC, the web archive format, and something called archive, no. There was something, there, there's some kind of archive uh, tool um, that we'll probably need eventually to for pages because pages will change all the time. Like a news article will get updated a lot on like CNN or something or BBC. And like the way that highlights work right now is that they're positional. So if, if things move around on the page, you will actually lose those highlights and you don't want that. Um, so archiving sounds like the best approach because not only is it resilient against, you know, the server admin just pulling the plug in the server and then you never have, never see the page again, but it also prevents uh, the, those changes breaking the current highlights. So that's long term. I would like to, you know, store and 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 like kind of display from memory those or from from file storage these things. Probably like a, it's a matrix file. Like you just upload it to matrix as a file. I prefer to, I would prefer to keep everything on matrix purely so that um, no special things are needed at all. Very cool. So that, that's a, a feature uh, for the future. Do you have a public roadmap of all the things you want to add to Matrix Highlights? <laughs> uh, I On the GitHub page, I have some planned uh, features. I don't have any roadmap. Uh, I think the pr- specific priorities change all the time. Uh, and really, I, I work on whatever like annoys me the most each time, <laughs> uh, which is a very non-deterministic kind of thing. You know, I really can't... Um, <laughs> plan ahead to see what's going to annoy me next. Uh, so, and I think already I have a matrix room for this and for, for the project and people come and say, Oh, maybe you should do this. And I say, all right. And I, and I've changed like some of the UI or like to, to uh, get kind of go along with what people are saying. Uh, so even if I have some plans, the change based on if anyone else has any ideas what to do next. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to add a, a link uh, to the repository uh, in the description of the video. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm going to add a link to the matrix room too, so people can join the phone and, and ask for mm-hmm. fancy new features, which will or will not be implemented because you are doing this on your free time. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, and you are doing um, annoyance-driven development, so what yep. annoys you the most is going to be implemented. Yep. Um, do you have? Uh, are you working on other projects uh, you would like uh, to talk about? Uh, do you have any final thoughts uh, you would like to conclude the episode with? Uh, actually, no. I mean, I'm not really working on anything else right now, and I've got no real final thoughts other than I hope that the people who see this and and try out Matrix Highlight like it. I don't know. All right, perfect. So we can wrap it up then. Uh, thanks a lot, Daniel, for the nice interview. And thanks, uh, thanks a lot for uh, Matrix Highlight, uh, which is a very cool project and very useful. I can't wait to see what you are going to do, especially uh, regarding archive, because this is one of the things uh, I was wondering uh, today. So if, if you just change the page, you can lose everything, which is yeah. uh, it can be annoying pretty quickly. Uh, so yeah, mm-hmm. looking forward to that and see you later. Oh, you're still there. Perfect. Uh, You might have noticed that the previous episode and this one were about Bayon Chat. The next episode is going to be about Bayon Chat too, but I can't spoil it too much. One thing I forgot to mention in the episode, which is quite interesting, is that you have several ways to model things when you want to make a a matrix-powered application. You can either do like uh, the Populous Viewer author did uh, which means getting spaces in several rooms, etc., to sort information. That's a valid way to do things. Another way to do it is like Daniel did, uh, to have a single room in which you have custom events to store your data, making 
your room a sort of file uh, for, for your application. It's a valid application too. If you are interested in doing B and chat applications, I strongly recommend you to go to the B and chat room. I'm going to leave a link in the description of the episode. And I strongly encourage you to go have a look at the MSC 3088, which is about giving a purpose to a room and it might help decluttering the interface because if you just have a room right now, it's going to appear in the UI of uh, Element, Fractal, NeoChat, Neko, etc your instant messaging client. So have a look at it and give feedback on that MSC. Happy hacking.